Yo, what's up everybody? Jumping here and today I want to talk about this new amazing Witcher quest that they added into Monster Hunter World. I was just completely blown away by this. I thought it was going to be actually quite lame to be quite honest just because I thought it was going to be something really basic and that you would probably get an armor set, maybe a weapon, and that was it. But actually the quest itself is so cool and so awesome, especially if you like the Witcher. I'm a big time Witcher fanboy. So this 100% blew me away, and now I'm like, man, Witcher 4 needs to come out for sure, because I miss me some Witcher. But this was just a really cool quest that they added, so I definitely recommend, if you own Monster Hunter World, definitely get on the game and play the quest, because you will have a lot of fun regardless. And if you are a Witcher fanboy as well, you will absolutely love it. Now what I want to do here is I want to actually show you the rewards that you can get from doing this quest. And also, I want to talk about what's going to happen next week, because apparently, I guess, there's going to be an upgraded version of this quest that will come out, maybe a tempered version. I'm not exactly sure, but there will definitely be an upgraded version that will come out, and then we can actually upgrade the weapon, and we will get a new weapon as well. So I want to talk about that. But also, I'm going to go ahead and show you guys how you can actually fully complete this quest. I'm going to make a quick little guide. I'm not going to make it the entire thing but I'm going to show you like how to find all the secrets and stuff throughout the quest so that if you want to fully complete the quest you can Alrighty, let's go ahead and get started with this so I want to talk about the weapon that you can get right now which is actually the witcher's silver sword now there is a rarity 8 version of this weapon you cannot actually craft it until next week you can see it right now but you cannot actually make it until next week once the other event will come out but the Rarity 8 version will have 266 attack with 330 dragon attack. It's going to have one level one slot. It's going to have white sharpness and high elder seal. So in general, I think that that sword and shield might end up being the best general use sword and shield in the entire game. That definitely sounds really good. Now, sword and shield is really not that popular. A lot of people don't really use it. The more noteworthy weapon that will be coming out it's going to come out with the new event because with that event you're going to be able to make series armor and you're going to be able to make her weapon which will be some dual swords now those dual swords will have 294 attack with 240 dragon attack a level three slot high elder seal white sharpness by far i definitely think that those dual swords will end up being the best general use dual swords in the entire game so i'm really excited for that because i'm a big fan of dual swords and I definitely want that weapon for sure. Now, as of the armor, to be quite honest, it's a full armor set. And normally, full armor sets are never that good. And this is what you get. You can look at the stats. You get three health boost, three recovery speed, three weakness exploit, which is nice. Three marathon runner, which can be kind of good for dual swords. But at the same time, it's not that useful generally. Two attack, two critical eye, two bombardier. So that's really cool. You get a lot of slots too, like multiple level one slots. Let me go ahead and show you that right now. And you can see how many level one slots and stuff like that. So yeah, you get multiple level one slots. I think there's five and you get one level three slot and two level two slots. So overall, the armor set's really not that bad. If you don't really have any good armor as of right now, maybe you just started playing this game. I'm not exactly sure. This armor set would actually be pretty good for you. Now, the other thing you can get is actually the Nectar Armor for the Palico, which I'm not a big fan of just because I don't really like the way it looks. I mean, it's kind of ugly, but it's pretty cool as well. I'm going to be showing you how to get that because I know a lot of people are having trouble with that, but it's actually really easy to actually get the Palico Armor. So I'm going to go ahead and show you what that's all about. I don't know about the stats, honestly. Who cares about the stats on the Palico? But there you go. There's the armor and the weapon as well you can get that let me go ahead and show you that the weapon's actually pretty strong i guess it has negative affinity but it has actually like high attack and stuff but overall i definitely don't see myself using this palico armor i like other ones a lot more so yeah but i will show you guys how to actually get the necker that you have to capture you do have to capture one if you want to make the palico armor but now that i've showed you the rewards and remember next week we're going to have another event quest, I guess, or special assignment. I'm not exactly sure. But once that comes out, then you're going to be able to make the series full armor set. You're going to be able to make those dual swords. You're going to be able to upgrade the Witcher sword and shield. So that's really cool. And yeah, 
This quest overall is just amazing. Like I said, if you haven't played it yet, you definitely want to get on Monster Hunter World and check it out if you own this game just because it's a lot of fun. So now I'm going to show you guys pretty much a short little guide on how to actually get the 100% completion for the quest. And also I'll show you guys how to capture the Necker as well if you're having trouble with that. Alrighty guys, well I'm in the quest now, and the first thing I want to say is I pretty much recommend the longsword for this. I just feel like it's the best weapon, it's really easy to use, and it's actually the most popular weapon in the entire game. Now once you start this, you have a choice to go left or right, and we're going to go left because that's going to take us to our first side quest. And that's the important part, if you want to get the 100% completion, you have to discover the side quest, and you have to complete the side quest, as well as the main quest itself, so... This is main quest here, so I'm going to go ahead and cut this ahead so I don't actually spoil anything. But yeah, I'll see you guys in a moment. Alright, so once that is done, what we're going to do is we're actually going to go ahead and head over this way. And this is kind of close to the south camp. And we're just going to keep going down this way because we can actually find a marking on the wall. Now, if you've played Monster Hunter World, this is actually a side quest in the game where you can find these markings. It's for the cats or whatever, the tribal cats. Now, this is the easiest one to find, like, right away. Where there's other ones as well, but don't really worry about those. But the first one is over here. And he will say, hum, whenever he walks past one of these things. And then just go ahead and check it out. And now it's going to actually put a marker on our map to go and talk to one of the commission people. So that is going to be located over here. So we're going to go ahead and just travel to the northeast camp. And then we're going to make our way over there. Alrighty guys. So once you actually talk to the guy, what's going to happen is he's going to tell you that you need to make your way to the top of the tree. Now the quickest way of doing that is going to the ancient forest camp and once you're here just make your way over this way and this is actually where you will find the raffalos nest and that is where you're gonna have to fight some of the little cat tribal guys once you've done that then you're gonna get a cutscene, and you're gonna talk to the guy or whatever and they're gonna tell you that their chief is missing so now we have to find the chief now you have two options here you can go and talk to the handler in the south camp or i believe you could probably get away with just going directly to area 13 on the map but i'm not exactly sure i've never actually just went to area 13 i'm pretty sure though that you could probably skip this part of it but we're gonna go in and talk to the handler and then i will show you where you can find area 13. Alrighty guys, well the easiest way to find Area 13 is to travel to the Northwest Camp. And then from here, we just need to exit. And there's going to be some vines in front of us. We need to climb up those. And that will take us pretty much to Area 13. Area 13 is the Devil Joe Nest. But it's pretty much right below where the Anginoff will actually nest. So if you know those areas, then you can actually get here. The only problem is ever finding them. Because normally when you go to those areas, you are chasing the monster down. And you're not really paying attention to how you got there. So it can be a little confusing. But this is your fastest slash easiest way of making it over to Area 13. So from here, we can just go ahead and try to find our way down but it just updated my quest there here we are so if we jump down here this is where we will find the chief and we're gonna have to fight him so i'm gonna cut that out and then you're gonna get a cut scene but once you've done that you're pretty much done with this side quest and you don't have to worry about it you will get the reward at the end as long as you complete the main quest Alrighty guys, well right now I am doing the second part of the main quest and as I'm doing this I can actually initiate the next side quest. Now this side quest is actually one that's kind of a problem and that is because you can fail this and if you're not careful you might fail it and if you fail it well you're not going to get the 100% so that's a big big problem so i'm gonna go ahead and give you some tips on how not to fail it but it really won't come into play until much later now right here we're finding some of these puka pukis that are pretty much been strangled by these vines so that's kind of cool but if we just travel over this way we can actually find one that is still alive okay i'm getting a little lost there he is he's over here and we can actually free him and that's going to start the next side quest so to free him all we gotta do is cast igni and that's it 
and there you go. Alrighty guys, well this is absolutely the most important part of the entire quest. The very end of the actual fight, the Pookie Pookie will actually make its appearance. Now you already completed the chief side quest, that does not matter. But this is what is important, is to keep this thing alive. Now it's really easy for it to be killed if it's being attacked, and then especially if the little Jagrasis will appear, they will swarm up on it. And even if you're fighting the monster itself really far away, those Jagoras will actually swarm up on it and kill the Pookie Pookie. So you really want to make sure to kill the Jagoras if you can. But also, at some point of the fight, whenever you are damaged, instead of using potions on yourself, use the life powders and that will actually heal the Pookie Pookie. That will definitely help your chances of actually staying alive. Now, once you've done that, then you can just go back and pretty much focus on the actual monster and then eventually you'll kill it and you are good to go at that point. You have successfully done everything from the quest. Alrighty guys, now that the quest is over, we can actually go ahead and get this Necker now. This is another thing that I know people were having trouble with. Now one thing I forgot to mention is if you do do the extra side quest, you will be rewarded for that. By saving the Pookie Pookie and making sure that it does not die, you will actually get an attack jewel, which is so awesome because I know so many people want to get those attack jewels and they are giving one out for free. So definitely take advantage of that and get that attack jewel. And the other item you get for the chief quest is you actually get an item, I guess, what it does is that it makes it so that those little cats will not actually attack you as often or they'll help you out more when you're hunting monsters. That's really cool as well. So those rewards are really nice and they just go with everything else that you get from this awesome event. Now, if you want to get the Necker, what you're going to have to do, first thing is once the quest is over, you need to go and talk to the investigation people or whatever. And then after that, you will need to wait for it to be nighttime. So right now it is nighttime, and now we can go ahead and go on an expedition to the ancient forest. Now, this is actually pretty easy to actually get this necker. A lot of people were having a lot of hard times finding it, but in reality, it's super easy. So we're going to travel to the south camp, and then from there, I'll show you what you need to do to get the necker. Alrighty guys, well I'm on the expedition now. First thing is make sure it's nighttime and also leave your Palico at the camp. And you also might want to go ahead and grab the ghillie mantle because that will help with this. And let's go ahead and equip our capture net. Now this is much easier if you actually have a great Jagras in the area. I've tried doing this with the other method. I've read about this online that you can actually get away with just getting some raw meat. You can kill the dinosaurs and grab raw meat and then pretty much do the same thing that we're about to do, but with the raw meat. I've tried that and it did not work for me. So I want to say that your best method for doing this is to just go ahead and try to come here at night when there is a great Jagras. But then again, I'm not sure if the raw meat strategy works or not. So right now what we're doing is we're just waiting for the Jagras to make its way over here. And then it's going to go ahead and eat one of these dinosaurs and then it's going to return back to its nest. And that is where we are going to be able to get the Necker. So I'm just going to go ahead and chill here and wait for the Jagras to appear. There it is. You guys should be pretty used to this if you did do the greatest Jagras quest because a lot of people would just always let it come out here to eat first. That way you can get more jewels and stuff like that. So it's going to go ahead and now eat one of these dinosaurs. This will always happen every single time. And I always find this so funny when it actually eats one of the dinosaurs. Oh my god, it's hilarious. And there we go. So now we can just go ahead and put the ghillie mantle on now. And pretty much just follow it back. And make sure you have the net on. Because you don't want to accidentally not have that net on. And we're just going to go ahead and follow it back to its nest. And then it's going to puke up the meat. And at that point, the Necker should appear. Like I've said, I've tried this before with raw meat. And it just did not work. I don't know why. But I did do this before where it would spit up the meat. And it worked fine. And let's see if it works this time. Waiting for it to become night is a real pain. I absolutely hate waiting for it to become night. Yep, there it is. So this seems to be guaranteed. Every single time that you actually do it this way, 
it is 100% guaranteed compared to it not working for me, at least with the raw meat. And there you go. That's everything that you can get from the Witcher quest as of right now. Remember, next week there will be another quest, which I'm not sure on how that's going to go. But what's really cool about that is that we're going to get the series armor. We're going to get her dual swords. We can upgrade the Witcher silver sword. So that is awesome. Alrighty, guys. Well, I really hope that you have enjoyed this and that this has helped. If it has, will you please like the video for me? Be sure to subscribe for future videos and click the bell because if you don't click the bell, you don't get notified and it's really dumb. I don't know why they changed that and made it so subscribing means nothing anymore. But I really do hope that everyone has a very nice day and poo so.